Alright guys, welcome back to the last video. So now the only thing that we have left to do is really to connect to our database. We are going to use MongoDB for it and I'm going to show you the service that we're going to use for that. And basically we need to send our data to the database and then retrieve it back and send it onto our front end. So let's get started to use our MongoDB. I actually want to use in here this service which allows you to have a MongoDB database online completely for free so you don't have to spend any money. So put on Google MongoDB Atlas and start for free. So you can register in there, put your email, put your password and then you should get in. So once you are all in, so if you haven't registered yet, just press the pause button and then come back to this part. Once you are all logged in and registered, you should be able to see some sort of a, an interface like this one. And on the left side, there is going to be a menu in here. I want you to select this part which says clusters. And it's going to give you this option of building a cluster. Okay, so this is where we're going to build our database. So I'm going to click in here on how to build a cluster. I want to click in here on this part that it says shared clusters. That is one that we can create completely for free. So I'm going to do create a cluster. All right. So you don't need to mess up with anything in here. There's going to be all these different parts. I'm going to leave it as AWS. I'm going to put in here uh, in Ireland. This is the free tiers. Um, and you don't need to touch anything else around here. Look. Just leave it as it is because this is the, the shared version. And then you're going to put in here on the cluster name. I'm going to give the cluster name is going to be, for example, the MERN tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to click down here where it says create cluster. Okay, so once you click on that, it will take around, like it says in here, around one to three minutes for this cluster to be ready for you to use. So let's just wait this and once it's done, I will come back. All right, so looks like everything is installed now. So we could go in here on this button where it says connect, all right? And in here, now when you're gonna press on this button of co uh, connect, is asking you to create a database name, sorry, a, a username and a password. So whenever you want to connect to this database, you need to have a user that will, you will allow. So I'm going to create in here a username of Telmo. Okay. So this is the username that you will use to connect to the database. So don't forget about this username and don't forget about this password. So my password that I'm going to put in here is going to be um, Telmo123. So... I think it should be fine. So password Telmo123, and this is going to be my username. Now, in here on the top, you also have a part that it says whitelist a connection IP address. So basically what this does is like to make sure that no one else in the world can access your database, you can just add in here, add your current IP address to be the only one allowed to connect to your database. So you are the only one who can change things in there, can delete, can add, or you can add some different IP address. For example, if you are working from home, but you are going to work on a coffee shop or, a, or in the office or whatever, or you can have this option, which is allow access from anywhere, which is not very secure, but for this purpose in here, I'm just going to put this one. Okay, I have my database user, so I'm going to create in here, create database user, Telmo username, Telmo123 is our database user. And now, looks like this is all set up, choose a connection method. And I want to select this one in here on the middle that it says connect your application. Okay, and in here, it gives me this string. This is what I want to copy. I'm going to copy this string. Going back into my files in here on my server.js, just before my app.post, this route that we had from before, I'm going to create in here const db url. And now this is going to be equals to, I'm going to put this as a string, 
this is my connection that I passed there from before. Okay, in here, you need to pass your username, which is already here automatically for you, but then you need to replace this part. Look, all of these that they have selected, including these like less than and greater than um, signs, I need to delete everything and I'm gonna put my password, which was, if I'm not wrong, Telmo123. So don't try to connect to my database because I'm gonna delete it after this tutorial so you will not be able to do it. So don't try to do that. And finally, down here, there is a section which says, which one do you want to be your database name? Okay, I'm gonna call this one, Mern. I'm gonna call it React Node, like this, React Node, that's fine. React-node, this is gonna be our name of the database. Okay, so we got our database URL at the moment. Then the next thing I wanna do is create a function that will actually connect this that we have in here, our, our file, with the database. So let's do this. I'm gonna create a new um, function called connect db. It's gonna be equals to async. I'm gonna put this in here, an async function, because this is gonna be an asynchronous process. The way that you are connecting with a database, you know, could be your connection is being slow, could be the other connection in there or the server is being slow. So you need to make sure that you can handle these that could take an asynchronous function. So I'm gonna put async, and now in here, I'm gonna do a try catch block. So what the try catch block is gonna do is, if you're gonna connect to the database and everything is fine, that's okay, you can do some response to the user. If for some reason there is an error, so catch error, I'm just gonna do a console.log of the actual error, okay? So if everything goes fine, what do I wanna do in here, inside of the try block? What I wanna do in here is await. Now, I need to import my mongoose package that we installed before. So our mongoose package is what will allow us to connect with the database. So I'm gonna import it on the top, const, mongoose equals to require mongoose. And now that we got this package that we stole from before, I can do await, and I'm gonna do mongoose.connect. So this is the function that you want to run, await mongoose.connect. And the first thing you're gonna pass inside of this parenthesis is gonna be the URL of your connection. And then the second thing is gonna be some of these parameters. We need to pass a couple of these parameters in here just to not give a couple of errors on our, on our terminal, all right? So I'm gonna put them in here. You don't need to, to know everything what's happening in here is really just to get rid of some errors that they are coming, some warnings that are coming on our uh, terminal down here, okay? So use new URL parser, true, use unified topology, create index, use and find and modify. All right, so if everything in here goes fine, inside of this try block, I wanna do finally a console.log saying, MongoDB is connected. All right, so this should be fine. Obviously, we created this function, the connect DB. This function is never going to run until you actually call it. All right, so that's exactly what we're gonna do in here. So I'm gonna create down here, connect database, database, and finally, to connect the database, I'm gonna call this function just like this, and that should be enough, okay? Now, if everything that you have done is correct, you should be able to see a message in here saying, MongoDB is connected. So we are connected with this, so now we can send stuff into our database. All right, so up here, if you remember when we created our URL, you passed your username, and your password so you can connect to the database. And then you had to give it a name. So we called it React and Node. 
But now inside of these database, we need to pass something that they are called collections. So this is where you're going to have, for example, a collection where you can have your users uh, and, and have your other things that you want. So we need to create some sort of a template, a model for it. For that, let's go down here. I want to create outside of my client. Okay, the client is just for React. I want to create a new folder called models. And inside of it, I'm going to create a new file called user.js. Okay, so this is where I'm going to create a model or a schema. People call it different names of how of my collection is going to look like. When I send something onto the database, what's going to be the template? All right, so let's do that. In here on the top, I need to import my mongoose package like before. Mongoose equals to require mongoose. Okay, now I need to create my template, my schema, how people usually call it. So I'm going to say const. I'm going to say user schema is going to be equals to. All right, so this is going to be the name of my schema, of my template. And now I'm going to put in here const user schema equals to new mongoose, which is our package that we just installed. And I'm going to use in here the dot schema. Okay, so doing it like this, const user schema equals to new mongoose.schema, you will be able to create now your schema, your template. So how should it look like? Look, I'm putting this as an object inside. I'm going to put that whenever I want to send something onto my database, whenever I want to register a user, there is going to be like a column, or how you could call, for example, a key of name. And this key of name, I want it to be, when I send it onto the database, to be with a type of string. Okay, so when you specify in here the type, this one up here needs to be the string and needs to start with a capital letter, just like this one. And after the name, I'm going to specify the email. So I want to send a name and an email to the database. And I want this type as well to be a string. But there is one extra thing that I want. I want that this email, whatever email you are saying onto the database, there is a property that you can specify in here, which is called unique. And this property unique, you can either tell it if the email that you are sending on the database is unique or not. So by default, look on the top, I didn't have to specify the unique property. So if you don't specify it, it's by default false. But if you want, you can specify that this is unique, true. Anytime that you send an email onto the database, it needs to be unique because if you try to send it back again, it's going to give you an error. Okay, so we specify our schema, our template of how things should look like when you send them onto the database. And then finally in here, I'm going to create a new variable. So this variable that we're going to create now is how we can use this schema on our code in here, on our Node.js. So I'm going to call it user. Usually when you want to use this kind of schemas, this kind of templates, you create a name for them that starts with a capital letter, just like this. This represents my templates, my schema for my users that I want to send on to my database. So this is going to be equals to mon goes. Okay. And now I'm going to do dot model. So mon goes dot model. And now there is two properties that we need to pass in here. First one is going to be the name that you want to pass inside of your database. Do you remember that we created the database called react-node? Now, how am I going to call this schema that I'm going to send onto the database? I'm going to call it user. This is what this collection, this schema is going to look like on the database. By default, when you are creating a new database on a, a new collection on your database, this name is going to be converted to plural. 
So if you have in here user, it's going to be called users on the database. And then the next thing that you want to pass in here, this is going to be, okay, which one is the schema related to this name? The schema related to this name that you want to send out to the database is this one, user schema, the one that we just created on the top. Okay. And now there's one step left, which is we need to export this code that we have in here to be able to use it in other files. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do module dot exports. And what I want to export is this user that I just created in here. Okay, we created this. Now it's time for us to actually save something into our database. So let's go back to our server.js. And in here, if you guys remember when we were sending some data from the front end, from our register form in here to our back end, we need to actually send something onto the database. First of all, let's go in here onto the top and let's import that user schema that we just created. So const user, look, with a capital letter. This will represent this schema that we are just exporting. Look, module.exports user, which represents this schema. So I'm going to say const user equals to require. And now I want to require, remember that we are writing down this code in our server.js. So I'm going to put dot slash to look for all the folders and files on the same level of directory. I want to go inside of the models folder and I want to grab the user.js file. You don't need to put the .js if you don't want to. Okay, let me save this. Now that I have that schema, I can actually use it in here. Okay, going back to this route where we are sending some data from our front end to the back end. When we got this in here, I actually want to try and put in here a try catch block. The try catch blocks, like I mentioned before, if everything goes fine, you're going to write down, write this code or run it, which is inside of the try block. If for some reason there is an error, you can do something with that error. Okay, what's the first thing that I want to do in here with my um, register with this data? So the first thing that I want to do is I want to put, first of all, this function that we got up here, I want to turn it into an asynchronous function because any time that you are sending some data onto your database or you are retrieving it is an asynchronous process. Okay, so I'm going to put try and I'm going to put in here now await, await, and I'm going to grab my user schema I want to use the dot create. Okay. So this dot create is a function. And what I want to create on my database now, I need to specify a name. Okay. Remember, why do I put a name in here? Because this is what I have on my schema. Look, I have a name on my schema. Go inside of models, your user.js. I have a name on my schema. And then what's going to be the value of this is going to be request dot body dot. Let's see what do, are we sending from before. Let's go in here in our source, in our form.js. So on your form.js, this is where you are sending it. Look on the body that you are sending from the front end to the back end, you are sending an object with a username and user email. So this is what we want to use. Let's go back to our server. So I say that whenever I come in here to this URL on my backend, I want to send on to my database. So I'm saying user.create. I want to put on my database on the key of name, the request.body.username. This is what's coming from the front end. And then finally, I want to put on the email of my database, what's going to be the value? Request dot body dot user email. All right, so this is what happens if everything is going fine. 
after I actually want to put in here, let's go up here. After you created this, I want to send a response. Remember, you always need to send a response onto your front end. Otherwise, this code is just going to be like loading, loading until crashing. You always need to send a response. The message that I'm going to put in here is going to be user registered. But if for some reason there is going to be an error, let me get rid of this console.log. Probably the error that is going to happen is if you are trying to register the same person with the same email, we could send on our catch block a res.json with a message of that email is already registered. Okay, we could do something like this. Perfect. Okay, let's try this out and see if this is working. Let's go to our browser. Let me go in here. Let me go into my React app. Let me refresh it. I'm going to try to go into register. I'm going to put on the name. I'm going to put Telmo. I'm going to put an email of telmo at email.com. And I'm going to press register. Okay, so let me go back to my uh, VS Code to see if I have any error. So I don't have any error at the moment. Mm, let's see on our database. If you click in here where it says collections, let's say if it happens something or if I got some error. No, it actually worked. So as you can see, you got React node and you got users, which is the name of your collection. And inside you got name and email, okay? So I think the only problem that we have in here at the moment was that we didn't specify this message in our front end. So let's go back to the front end, to our form.js. When we are grabbing down our response, so what I actually want to do in here on my form.js is that when I send all of these, I want to do something with this response, okay? Before we were just doing a console.log of it. I want to run a function like this called um, set user details, which is how you are updating the state. If you remember when you were typing down all the details for your username, for your user email in here on the front end, you were changing the state, but you actually never changed this one for the message. So after you send everything to the backend, once the backend sends you a response back, let's get rid of this. I'm going to do set user details. I'm going to grab everything that was there from before on that state using my spread operator. And now the next thing I want to set up in here is the message of my state is going to be equals to the response that is coming from the database dot data, so response dot data, and then I want to grab the message. Okay, so now that we got this on our, on our um, state, we should be able now to display this message down here. So I'm going to do something like this. If my user details dot message, this is what on my state message. If you guys remember, initially is empty. I'm going to say using a ternary operator. So if this user.details message has some value as some text, it means that is true. So the ternary operator looks like this. Whatever you have in here, if this condition is true, I'm going to write down whatever is the code that is coming after the question mark. So if I want to use multiple lines, I'm going to put some parentheses. I want to put, actually, let me just put in here so we don't need to use the parentheses. Okay, I want to put in here what? An h1 with a class name of, for example, a result message. So result message. And the value of it is just going to be whatever is on the state, on the user details.message. Okay, let me put this curly braces down. So this is where it's starting. This is where it's finishing. So if this condition is true, 
we want to see this h1 with this. If not, let me put in here a colon. If not, I don't want to display anything, so I'm just going to put a null message. Okay, let me just indent these a bit more so we can see what's happening. Uh, finally, we just want to put in here some uh, um, styling for this result message. So going into my form.css, I'm going to put my result message. I want to set the background color. So background color to be orange. And now the padding of this message to be 10 pixels, top and bottom, 20 pixels left and right. Okay, hopefully this is all working fine. Let me just refresh the page and try to register one more user. I'm going to try John. So this is the name. And then I'm going to put john at email.com. I'm going to press register. And it says now, look, user register. Let's look into our database. There is a button in here on the top that it says refresh. Okay, there is a button that says refresh. Let's look into our database. React node is the name of the database. Users is our collection, if you remember. Where is it on my, uh, where is it on my model? So if you guys remember, I told you that this is the name of your collection. And when you send it into the database, it's going to be converted into plural. Okay, so we got all of these. Let's try now and register someone which is already on the database, like this, for example, Telmo. Okay, let me just refresh the page. If I try to do, uh, the name doesn't matter because the name is not unique, but if I try to do the same thing, telmo at email.com, and I try to register, look, that email is already registered. Okay, so we are sending everything that we want onto the database. Now, let's try to retrieve everything that is on the database onto our front end in here. Okay, so let's go, because this was hard-coded from before, if you remember. On our home.js, where we had this part in here of all these allies, first of all, where was it? We need to go onto our uh, server.js. On this uh, route of the app.get API users, so that's where we want to go first of all, we're going to say that whenever we go to this URL, I want to do a try catch block like this. And I'm going to create a new variable called const users. So these will represent all my users that I'm bringing from my database. And now I'm going to say that this needs to be an asynchronous function. Of course, remember, we are dealing with a database. I'm going to put await. And now I'm going to say user, which is my schema, which is the way that I connect to my database. And I want to use this function called dot find. This function of the dot find will go inside of your user collection and bring everything that is back in there and store it in this variable of users. Okay, so now that we got this, I want to send a response onto my front end. So I'm going to say res dot json and i'm going to say i want to have a json with the name of users and then inside i'm going to put the value that i want which is these users this is what represents from the database okay if there is some error i'm going to do a console.log of the error Let's try this out. Let's try to go onto our browser to localhost 5000 because look, we are using a get method. When you are using a get method, it means that you can try this on the browser. localhost 5000 forward slash API users. Let's try this. Go up here, localhost 5000 and then forward slash API users. Okay, I'm going to try and see what's happening in here. Oh, I think that I did not do this correctly. Look, we never send a response onto the front end. If I go back, 
I did a restart.json. That's why my page is just like loading until it crashes. You want to do a res, not restart. This is the autocomplete sometimes from Visual Studio Code. So as you guys can see, now if you go onto your page, let me just increase the size of this. Look, you got an object as a JSON with a key of users and inside you got an array with all the users that you got on your database. So now that you are retrieving these from the database into your backend, okay, you are sending this as a response so the front end now can grab it. So let's do that. I believe that we need to go inside of our home.js. So let's go in here. And now we need to create a couple of things. The first thing I want to create is a state that will represent all these users that they are coming from the database. So I'm going to do const and then I'm going to call these users. And if I want to change this state anytime, I'm going to call this function called set users. Okay. And now this is equals to the use state hook. All right. We need to import it on the top. Don't forget. I'm going to do in here, um, curly braces, use state. And now the initial value of this is going to be an empty array. Okay. So we need a function that will allow us to grab everything that the backend is, is sending us. So I'm going to create this function called const get users. And now this is going to be equals to an asynchronous function. Okay. Because we are trying to send some, some uh, requests to the backend and then retrieve it. So we need the asynchronous function. And what I need to do in here is create a new variable called response to grab the response from our backend. And I need to do a weight of axios.get. Okay. So axios.get. I'm using in here a get method because as you guys notice, this is what we set up in our backend. So uh, I need to import axios up here. So import Axios from Axios. I think this is even did it automatically for me. If it didn't do for you, make sure that you import Axios in here on the top so you can use it. Now, where do we want to make this request of Axios.get? If you guys remember, is this one on the top. Localhost 5000 forward slash API forward slash users. This is where you want to make your um, request. Now, because we set up all that proxy from before, if you remember, you don't need to specify all of this. You just need to specify this. I think it's forward slash API forward slash users. Okay. So now that this is working, I believe that's it. Uh, oops, I didn't put this in the correct place, which should be here. Oops, let me undo cut this off, put it in here. Now, what do I want to do with this response? What I want to do with this response is calling this function of the set users, okay, to update our state. And what I want to put inside of it is going to be whatever is coming from my API. Look, this is going to be response.data. When you do response.data, you can actually grab all these values. Let me just confirm it for you. Let me do a console.log of the response dot data. Okay. I will leave this in a second just for you guys to see each one of the steps that is happening. So obviously we have this function in here called get users. This function is never going to run until you actually call it. So when do we want to call this function? We want to call this function whenever our page is completely loaded. So let's do that. I'm going to do in here a use effect. So this is one of the functions from um, React hooks. So let me just delete this. I really want to do this slowly. So use effect, make sure that you import it on the top because this is part of the React hooks. So use effect. 
And now this function use effect takes another function inside. And down here, after these curly braces, I need to put a comma and an empty array. When you have this kind of dependency like this, an empty array, it means that this function is only going to run, run once when the page is loaded. And what kind of thing do I want to run when the page is completely loaded? I want to run this function of the get users. So if you guys see this function of the get users, we'll make a request into our backend to retrieve all the users from the database. And then we will log it into in here our console. Okay, so let me just refresh the page. Um, let me save this. Yeah, okay. Let me just get rid of this zoom and just do an inspect, a console. And if you guys look in here, where is uh, my line? My line is line 10, okay? My line 10 is telling me that I have an object with a key of users and inside I got this array with this name and so on. Okay, so what I actually want to grab is response.data.users. This is what I'm sending from my backend. If I check this again, look, this time I got an array with these two objects. That's exactly what I want. So still inside of this function, I want to update this state on the top, this set users with this value of the response.data.users. Okay, now that we got this, these two objects that we want, or could be three, doesn't matter because this is dynamic. The next thing that you want to do is you just want to do um, a loop through everything that is inside of your state. So I'm going to go in here, const all users is going to be equals to if inside of your state users.length is greater than zero, it means that if there is some users on your um, on your state, initially there is nothing, but when we load the page, there should be something. So you need to do this check, otherwise your code will break. And then you're gonna do users.map. So you're gonna map, you're gonna loop through all these values. And now the dot map function takes another function inside like this. And every time that you are looping through this data on your state, you can call it, for example, you can call a placeholder of course, not course, um, user. So user is going to be whatever we are looping, the first user, then the second user and so on. And now what you want to do is the dot map function always returns something. And I want to return uh, an ally like this. I want to return an ally. And every time that you run a loop with a dot map, you actually need to pass an index. Okay. The second parameter of a dot map function is an index that the first time you run the loop is going to be one, sorry, zero, and then one, and then two, and so on. So we need to pass in here a key of the index just so we doesn't have an error on our screen. You will see that if you run a dot map in React and you don't specify a key, it will give you some warnings. It's not really errors, but it's some warnings. So we can use this to just get rid of it. Don't overthink it too much because you don't really need this, but it's just to get rid of the warnings. Now inside of the ally, what do I want to put in here? I want to put the name and the email of this person. So I'm going to say name is going to be user, which is this that we are looping through at the moment. I want to grab the dot name and then I'm going to put in here the email is going to be user.email. Remember that this is the keys, the dot name and the dot mail. This is the keys that they are coming from the database. Okay, so finally, we can just go down here where we had these hard coded and we could just go and just paste these all users. 
okay? So as you guys can see, you got all users and you got this name and you got this one for John. Let's try to register one more person. Okay, I'm gonna go in here into register. I'm gonna go in here, for example, uh, Sarah. I'm gonna do Sarah at email.com. I'm gonna press register. So user register. Let's check our database to see if he's in there. Refresh it. So you got in here, Sarah down here. Let's try and go to our homepage. There it is. We are grabbing everything dynamically. There's one more thing that we could do. If for some reason there is no names, like no names in here in our page, we could create um, a variable like const message equals to if my user state dot length dot length is greater than zero, which means that we have some people. I want this variable to be called in here, for example, all users. But if for some reason there is no users in here, I'm going to put in here, no users found. Okay. And instead of having this title that it says all users, I'm going to have this one as message. I'm not sure if I have this as message. Yeah, it should be fine. I'm just going to put in here message. Okay. So I got all users. I got all of these. If I go into my database, if you guys notice in here on the right, when you hover this, you can actually delete this. Look, I'm going to do the same thing in here. Delete. I'm deleting all the users that I have on my database. So at the moment, I shouldn't have anything. If I go back to my React application, to the home page and refresh, no users found. But if I register one, I'm going to say Peter. I'm going to say Peter at email.com. And user register. I go back to the home page. I can see all users and the name of Peter. All right, guys, and that's it for this tutorial. I just show you how you can connect React with Node.js, how you can send things onto the database and how you can retrieve them back. So I really hope that you enjoy this course. I'm going to have the links for all these files in here on the description if you want to have them as well. Um, and that's it. I will see you in the next one.